Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to have on the Sons of History show, Max McLean. Yes, Max McLean, founder of Fellowship for Performing Arts. Now, Fellowship for Performing Arts has actually put together some of the most fascinating plays that you will encounter. Some of their plays include The Screwtape Letters, The Great Divorce, A Man for All Seasons, Paradise Lost, Luther on Trial, and the one that we're going to talk about here momentarily, The Most Reluctant Convert, The Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. Now, what's good is that you actually don't even have to wait for the stage production to come into your town to go see it. Although I do highly encourage you to go see it when it does come into your town. But the reason being is that they've just completed the film version of The Most Reluctant Convert, The Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. And that film is going to hit theaters November 3rd, and I highly encourage you to go see it. I got to see it the other night. I absolutely loved it. It is beautifully done. Max McLean plays his typical brilliant self. Nicholas Ralph from All Creatures Great and Small plays a younger version of C.S. Lewis and he does a stellar job. And this film is also directed by the legendary director Norman Stone. Now, before I get way too ahead of myself and carrying on, let's go ahead and bring Max McLean on. All right, Max, it is great to have you. It is, it's great to see you. Thank you so much uh, for joining the Sons of History. Uh, how are you doing? I'm great. It's good to be with you, and it's good to see you again. All right, so we want to talk about your, your new film, uh, The Most Reluctant Convert, The Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. Um, I got the opportunity to watch it the other night. It is absolutely fantastic, but I don't want to jump right into that just yet. I want to ask you some questions. Um, one, Fellowship for the Performing Arts, which you founded. Um, now, that's strictly been stage productions uh, for a long time, and you've done a lot of stage productions, The Screw Tape Letters, uh, The Great Divorce, Luther on Trial, and many others. So how did a film project come about, and why did you choose the most reluctant convert out of the many FPA productions to do? Well, um, we have an affinity with C.S. Lewis, of course. Uh, we've done uh, stage adaptations of the Screw Tape Letters, the, the Great Divorce. And both of those plays are fantasies, uh, theological fantasies, that uh, emerged out of Lewis's own personal uh, experiences his struggles with the Christian faith, the demands of it, you know, in, in one sense with, they're both about uh, spiritual warfare, screw tape letters about spiritual warfare from a demon's perspective and a uh, great divorce more from a, uh, how, uh, more from the idea of how we, uh, how we uh, uh, not follow the dictates of conscience. And, uh, and so Lewis was kind of working out his own uh, spiritual battles. And so that, that prompted me to go to his autobiography because you know it, they, they both are reflective of his conversion. So I went to his memoirs, Surprised by Joy, and I saw in that a theatrical story, you know, a, 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 a conversion story, once I was this, now I was that, that I, I thought would be really both uh, entertaining and engaging on, on stage. So that was uh, that was the the uh, it began as a uh, as a stage play and then later became a movie. Well, speaking of the stage play, now you've played C.S. Lewis for years. You've played that role, um, and it's always been on stage. I have uh, the stage production. Um, there it is. I have the stage production. I saw it a number of years ago twice. Um, and just thoroughly enjoyed it. So you are fully engrossed into the C.S. Lewis character on stage. So, but how different did it feel to do a film performance, especially getting off the stage, you're going into pubs, you're going into various houses, uh, and of course the beautiful Oxford. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, film and stage are two different mediums. Uh, stage, the, the imprint is primarily the voice, 
Uh, the focus is is on the story, the words. Words are really, really key on stage. The voice is really key. Uh, that's what uh, makes the impression. On film, it's about the image. Uh, words are a little bit less important. So uh, one of the things that I, I notice about uh, being on film, you know, on stage, you, you have to overcome space. You know, you have a big room that you have to fill and your expressions have to reach the back of the house. In film, the camera's right there. Uh, and so you have to bring it very internal, you have to internalize it a lot more. And uh, I felt like what, what I really appreciated about the stage experience is that all of those, um, those emotional memories that I had in working on it on stage, I could bring to the film. And, and it was important to do that because in film, the way you produce film is you, you take the script, you, you cut it up into a hundred pieces, you put it in a, ball, uh, in a bowl, and then you pick out one and you do this one, and you pick out this one, you do this one, uh, you know, and, then you and then the director pieces it all together. And so I had to, re you know, I had to take a, a 30 second or a one minute scene and, and use my emotional memory from the stage play to get it. So, so I could be at a at a at a hundred percent engaged at that moment, and then shut it down, and then do it again from this angle, do it again from this angle, uh, and then finally put it all together. Where on you know stage you you do you rehearse it for four to six weeks, in, in and uh, you perform it six to eight times a week in order, and so you you build this emotional memory, and and thankfully I had that experience to bring to the film. Absolutely. Uh, what's interesting is, uh, obviously, during the stage production, you were the only one on the stage. Uh, in the film, even parts where you were doing the talking, obviously, I mentioned the, the pubs and everything, and you have people walking around, but you actually enter into some scenes while dialogue is taking place um, with like a younger C.S. Lewis. It's very interesting that uh, just the idea and the the way it is, it is done to where you are telling the story, C.S. Lewis, an older C.S. Lewis, um, and to an extent almost a C.S. Lewis gone by, is telling the story of his life, his conversion from atheism to Christianity, and also seeing it uh, transform in front of his own eyes. Again, it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a... Um, I would say almost like a Charles Dickens Christmas Carol where he's re-experiencing uh, some of his own life. Uh, that's a very, very apt metaphor. Uh, that's exactly what the, the director, Norman Stone, had in mind uh, okay. with, with that. Uh, we, would, we did want to break the fourth wall. We did that early in the play, as you, you know, uh, and, uh, and then we, uh, all throughout the play, you know, what, what's happening, you're in his memory. And he goes, and as he goes back in his memory, so do we. Uh, and he's there in the memory, uh, you know, in flesh and blood. And, and uh, it's so, uh, it's so wonderful how that works. Absolutely. And, and speaking of the director, Norman Stone, now I turned 40 this month. Thank you very much. Um, Norman Stone has been directing films longer than I have been alive. And there is an obvious connection between you two that may not be personal, but there is a, an affinity for C.S. Lewis between both of you. Um, so there is that connection, but how did you two get connected and how did he become director of this film? Yeah, yeah. Well, we met at an arts conference about 10 years ago and, and uh, you know, I've, I've, I've known him by reputation because of the original BBC Shadowlands that he, he made in the early 80s, which was roughly 40 years ago, maybe 38 years ago. And, uh, and so I've respected him from afar. Then we got to meet, we hit it off right away. Uh, it's very easy to hit it off with Norman. Um, and uh, we stayed in touch. He comes to New York quite, quite regularly. That's where I live. And uh, when uh, the stage play was, was, uh, was, you know, had, had finally had matured to a place that I, I always thought that this could be a film. You know, obviously we recorded the stage version of it. You have that, but a, a, a film of it to open it up. Uh, I contacted him and sent him the script and, 
and asked him what he thought. And, and uh, we had uh, uh, quite a few communications in the fall of 2019 and the winter of 2020. Um, and uh, we both thought that it was worth pursuing this film. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we saw this as, you know, project down the road, 22, 23, maybe 24, uh, because we just had so much going on on stage. We had two tours on the road. We had Most Reluctant Convert doing colleges. We had a show in New York that had just closed, Paradise Loss. So uh, modern adaptation of Paradise Lost. So I was, uh, you know, I, I wasn't ready to tackle this, but then when COVID hit, you know, we, we had to pivot. And, uh, and so Norman said that, uh, uh, you know, when, when first we thought COVID would be short and then, you know, 15 days to flatten the curve. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, 19 months later. Um, but uh, in, uh, in June of last year, you know, uh, COVID shut, shut everything down in March. In June of last year, Norman, uh, we, we were working on the, on the screenplay and, and Norman said, you know, they're opening up filmmaking in Britain in August. And, uh, and since nobody's worked since March, I can get a really good crew and a really good cast if we're ready to go. And I said, well, if you can confirm that and make sure the locations that we needed are available, I'll go to my board, see if I can get the funding to get the film in the can and we can worry about post-production and distribution later. So uh, the board approved a budget to get it in the can. Uh, we got the rights from C.S. Lewis Estate. We had the rights for the stage, but we didn't have rights to the film. So we, we got those rights. Uh, and then uh, August 31st, I, I boarded a plane as big as Air Force One with fewer people on it and uh, uh, arrived in London Quarantine for two weeks, began shooting in mid-September and finished shooting in mid-October. And here we are one year later, about ready to release the film. Wow, that is, that is quite a journey. Um, yeah. that, is, that is amazing. And uh, opportunity, I mean, during one of the uh, worst times, I guess you could almost say in world history, um, an opportunity arises. And speaking of opportunity and speaking of, of cast and crew, this film is led by you, but it's also led by Nicholas Ralph, uh, who plays the younger C.S. Lewis. Nicholas Ralph is relatively new to the film industry, the film aspect, but he just burst onto the scene on the show All Creatures Great and Small, um, and just, you know, to rave reviews. How did, how did y'all two connect, and how did he become interested in, in playing the role of a younger C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Well, uh, in in August, uh, the very first episode of the first season of All Creatures Great Small, well, August of 2020, uh, hit Channel Five in in Great Britain, all over Great Britain. And Norman's wife saw the first episode, liked it, and we hadn't cast uh, the the younger Lewis yet. And she, Norman's wife said, "You should check out this guy. He's really good." And so. Uh, Norman did, and then called his agent, and and he would just finish up a shoot in Bul in Bulgaria, and and he said he was he he would do it, uh, you know, and that's interesting because no one really knew if All Creatures was going to be a hit or not, and so they hadn't even picked up a second season, so he was still a relative newcomer with with very little uh, attention paid to him, and. Uh, uh, I don't know if we could get him now, but he was available then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's been a, he's a joy to work with, and he's fabulous in our movie. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, he plays a great role, and that is one of the things that I thoroughly enjoyed about this film is uh, me growing up in the church, pastor's son, Christian. Watching Christian movies growing up was one of those things that I tried to avoid as much as possible because... Typically, the storyline wasn't that good or the acting wasn't that good. And so, but things have started to change. Christian movies are getting better. But this film, every single actor and actress plays such an important role, pivotal role, and plays it very well. Um, and so I have to compliment uh, all the actors and actresses on, on the film. It, it is well done. Now, speaking of the pandemic, going to that a little bit, this has been a time where a lot of people have had a lot of time on their hands. 
to question, okay, is there a God? And if he exists, what kind of God is he? And that is something that this film broaches at the very beginning. And C.S. Lewis sort of just gives his early perception of God. Yeah, he pulls no punches, doesn't he? None at all. And I love that. And I think that's extremely important. How much do you think that people today, Christians and non-Christians alike, will be able to relate to this film? Oh, I, I mean, it's C.S. Lewis. It's his own words. Uh, you know, he's probably the most influential Christian of the 20th century. And it's largely because he had a, uh, a, a heartfelt uh, uh, antith antipathy to Christianity. Uh, he didn't want anything to do with it. He saw God as this great interferer, he said, that uh, in all he ever wanted was to be left alone. And uh, so uh, I think people can relate to that. You know, the last thing I want to do is, is really obey God. I'd rather, you know, uh, obey my desires. Uh, one, somebody asked Lewis one time, uh, which religion gives its followers the greatest happiness? And Lewis' response was, well, I, I suppose the religion of worshiping oneself is the best while it lasts. And, and then he said, I didn't go into religion to make me happy. I always knew a bottle of port would do that. Um, so, you know, it, it recognizes our deep uh, uh, desire to uh, pull away from God. And, and so, and we make lots and lots of excuses and a lot of them are brilliant. You know, some of our excuses are really, really brilliant. So I do think that the questions Lewis asks in the film uh, resonate with the kinds of questions, uh, not just Christians, because Christians, you know, have their doubts that need to be answered. And, and, and many, many of the reasons unbelievers disbelieve is because nobody's really taken the time to answer their questions. Uh, you know, Lewis believed that, he didn't believe that rational arguments create belief, but he thought the lack of them destroys conviction because he knew that, you know, what is proved may not be accepted, but what no one defends is soon abandoned. Because, and that's, and that's kind of where, that's where things were in Lewis's day in the 30s and 40s, and that's certainly where we are today in America. So I, I know that you're, you're, you've got a busy schedule ahead of you, sort of strapped for time. Um, I'm going to combine my two last two questions into one. I thoroughly enjoyed the film. Um, now, you got to watch the film when it was done, um, and a lot goes into that. I, I want to pull out a few things. One, the book with C.S. Lewis, The Mere Christianity, Screw Tapes Letter, this is one of the books that I've read more than just about any other book. It's got like six or seven of his best works, Miracles, um, A Grief Observed. This one I believe that you referenced for me to get, The Weight of Glory. Um, and I, I bought that and read it. And these are two I know that you did reference for me to get, The Question of God. Um, this is a powerful book and you actually signed it. So that was, uh, thank you very much. And then A Severe Mercy. A lot of this, you did so much research to put this script together from the stage production, and these books and more go into that. Two things, how have the works of C.S. Lewis impact, impacted your life, and what did you think of the film once you saw it? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, when, I, when I first saw it, uh, it completed film, <laughs> I, I wrote Norman... Uh, and I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but I'll say, I said, I, I wrote Norman in an email, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Very apt. Uh, you yeah. know, and, but I, it was like, I was kind of blown away by it because it, you know, it's very cerebral, but it moves very quickly. And, uh, and so there was, there was that, what was the first part of your question? That was the second part, my, my experience of seeing it right away. Yeah. Just some of the, the works that, that went into putting this yeah, together. Yeah. Well, I love that work because, you know, Lewis is my spiritual guide. Mm -hmm. He helps me understand Christianity in a way that other people don't help me understand it. He answers my questions. Uh, I also find uh, that you don't get to the bottom of him. You know, if, if, 
if if Christianity was so easily understood, I mean, parts of it is really easy, and then parts of it are just so profound. You would feel like you got it, and therefore, you know, if it's that easy, then why should I believe it? Uh, Lewis just peels layers and layers and uh, 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 peels back layers and layers until it gets to a point where it's, uh, you know, you, you just say, you, you're just stunned by the immensity of who is, what God is. But beyond that, um, he gives me a picture of, you know, the Lewis's big idea is that there is another world, and that is where we come from. That's that's Lewis's big idea, and it's all through Narnia. Narnia is that other world, and uh, and Lewis helps me to uh, desire that other world, uh, and and takes me out of being so. Uh, uh, enslaved to uh, bonded to this world, uh, which is, you know, uh, you know, here is no continuing city. We await the one to come. Lewis shows us that other world. He also has this marvelous line that I quote all the time. If I find in myself a desire that no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is I was made for another world. And Lewis helps me to desire that other world. Beautifully said. Um, beautifully said. And yes, the works of C.S. Lewis has greatly impacted my life. And Max, I will say this honestly. You and your work have impacted me personally uh, at a very profound level. Um, you, I always had known or I had known about C.S. Lewis for a very long time, but it was really... You and your work with FPA um, that has really introduced me to C.S. Lewis at a much deeper level. And I can't thank you enough for that. So well, thank you so much. I, I'm grateful for that, Dustin. And, and uh, I didn't realize you live in Houston. Uh, we get to Houston pretty regularly. So I look forward to seeing you there. Yes. Can't wait till you guys get back here. I'm always checking the, I'm always checking the schedule. Yeah. Uh, March of 2022. Well, uh, then I will be there and I will see you then, sir. Okay. Max, thank, thank you. you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dustin. You got it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the conversation with Max McLean. Ladies and gentlemen, get your tickets. Get ready to go see this film. Take some friends. You will thoroughly enjoy it. Christian friends, non-Christian friends, I find this film, I find this story, one, riveting, but I find it also important. It answers so many questions that so many people, Christians and non-Christians alike, have. Now, you may be wondering, hey Dustin, what were some of those, what were some of those works that you had mentioned earlier? Well, some of the works that you definitely want to read of C.S. Lewis is you can buy these individually or you can buy them in this collection series, which has Mere Christianity, the Screw Tape Letters, The Great Divorce, The Problem of Pain, Miracles a grief observed, and the abolition of man. And yes, I've read all of them. Um, also, The Weight of Glory was another one that I had mentioned while we were having our conversation. Another one is A Severe Mercy. This is a powerful, powerful book. In fact, it was a National Book Award winner. And lastly, The Question of God. It is written uh, by Dr. Armand Nicoli. And he, dis he, he brings together C.S. Lewis and Sigmund Freud and just the debate that goes on. Obviously, there was never a debate with them personally, um, but Dr. Nicoli does a fantastic job. And I just highlighted and, and marked throughout that book. So make sure that you go get that one as well. But yes, if you've never experienced... C.S. Lewis, maybe you've only read uh, Chronicles of Narnia. I highly encourage you to read his works, and I guarantee you, well, you know what, I can't guarantee you everything, but for me, it has been life-changing. So I hope that you check out some of C.S. Lewis's works. 
but also become a fan of Fellowship for Performing Arts. You can check them out at fpatheater.com and also make sure that you go see the film. I trust that you will enjoy it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I am Dustin Bass for the Sons of History, and I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. I will talk to you later.